Hello YouTube, this is Blessed Daughter again and I'm going to do my second video and this is my video talking about the strange woman. The strange woman has two different meanings in the Bible. The first meaning is a woman that serves other gods. She's considered as a strange woman. The second definition is a harlot, a whorish woman. We see these women everywhere. So the first video I did was on a virtuous woman. This video is on the strange woman. And I'm going to read from the Bible what Solomon is talking about describing the strange woman. And I also use personal experiences and testimonies because I want you to know on my channel I'm going to be real. I want, I want to be real so that you can look through the scriptures and also find wisdom in the Bible. You can look back at your life experiences when you're reading the Bible, and this can help you to repent and change. The Lord wants you to read his word to help you to maneuver throughout life. So first, I want to start off with giving like a little um, reason why I, I decided to make this video. And it's because I have a son, he's 21, and I'm not too, too fond of his girlfriend. And... You know, to me, she, which she doesn't have understanding yet, and maybe down the line she'll receive it. She's a strange woman. And, you know, her, this is her ways, but as I read, you'll understand why I'm bringing this up. Now, you know, go parallel with what I'm reading in his situation. Because I want him to hopefully, if the Lord is willing, bless him with a virtuous woman, a woman of the Bible, um, a woman that's like his mother. So let me read. I'm going to uh, read from Proverbs 7, and I'm going to start at 5. And it says, that they may keep, all right, well, you know what? I'll start from Proverbs 1, um, Proverbs 7, verse 1. And it says, my son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live and my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers. Bind these words. Here we go. Bind them upon thy fingers. And um, write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger with flatterer, flatterer, flatterer <laughs> with her mouth, with her words. So. For instance, this woman, she can flatter a man to do anything with her words. She can get him to sway from what's right to what's wrong. So she can have control and have her way. That's what that's saying. Something that my beloved son is going through with the woman, the female he's dealing with. It says, um, number six. For at the window, this is Solomon talking, for at the window of my house, I looked through my casement. He looked through his curtains. Back then they called it a casement. And beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding. Sometimes this really reminds me of the situation that I'm going to do with my son. And like I said, I'm going to be real. It's nothing for me to hide. My mission is to help people to understand wisdom the lord bless me abundantly with wisdom and i want to read something later on when i do another video about solomon and wisdom so i'm going to share it i'm not going to hold everything to myself that's that's defeating the purpose so it says um eight passing through the street near her corner and he went the way to her house in the twilight in the evening in the black and dark night 
10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subdual of heart. I'm going to stop right there. Right now. The attire of an harlot. So right there, the Lord is, all right, Solomon is explaining this. Solomon has been blessed from the Lord to have wisdom, right? So right there, women, it's okay that the Lord knows my heart. Okay, yeah, he does know your heart. But it's also a way that a woman is supposed to dress. Either you're covering, you're dressing modestly, or you're dressing in the attire of a harlot, which may be a crop top, something showing your midriff, um, your, your cleavage. Your butt is hanging out. That's that's not the way the Lord attended women to dress. Because right here again, Proverbs 7 verse 10, And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. It, it, the word speaks for itself. So don't kill the messenger. You say you're, you love the Lord. You say you're a godly woman. This right here is written in the Bible. It's written right here in the Bible in black and white. So now I'm going back to the story of my son. Um, his, his girlfriend is a very attractive young lady, but she dresses in the attire of a Harley. I told her, I told my son, I told both of them separate times. I don't like the way she's dressing. For one, wisdom would tell you, you dress like that, you're going to get attention from other men. You can't get mad at the response that you get if you're dressing that way. Some women, they're just naturally pretty and they, 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 they dress regular. They can have on a white t-shirt and some jeans and they'll still receive attention. So why put yourself in danger and get negative attention? So, you know, my son even told her, you know, about the way that she was dressed and she got mad. Then she also told my son um, that he needed to put me in, ch in check. Now, that, that's not godly at all. You're going to tell my son to put me in check? That's, that's not right. Because she don't like the fact that I said she dresses like a whore. Okay, well, the, the Bible says it. Do you want to argue with the word that's in the Bible? I'm just the messenger. And also, I'm hopefully you would have common sense to listen so you could be safe. You won't get negative attention. Also, another thing, I don't want my son getting into a dangerous situation because he's dealing with a foolish female. That's number three. I don't want my son to end up getting in a dangerous situation. So, I'm going to continue reading. Right here, 11, she is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Women, that's loud. You, They always scream and they, their mouth is running. It, you you know these type of women, they're loud and not ladylike at all. Nothing, they're more like a heathen. She's very stubborn. My son's girlfriend, you tell her the right things to do and she want to argue and get upset and mad. Why? Why when I'm telling you the right things to do, you're, you're getting this way. Women and her feet abide not in her house. You see this all the time. A woman would rather be out clubbing and getting into trouble. There's nothing out there in the streets. For what? Why, why can't you stay in the house and take care of your household? Well, I'll say for a woman that has children, why are you out clubbing? And then I heard this, why can't I enjoy myself? Well, if you're a godly woman, you wouldn't even have your feet in a club. You know things happen in a club. Fights, shootings, is alcohol, all types of stuff that a godly woman shouldn't be involved in. Well, I need a break for my children. Well, if you need a break, well, it's, it's no such thing as getting a break when you have children. It's no, it really isn't. Your mom shouldn't be taking care of your children. I mean, it's nice for your children to visit grandma, but you're the mother. You should be in the house. Your eyes should constantly be on your children, especially young, young children growing up. So you should have yourself in the house, tended to your household. We read that in The Virtuous Woman. Um, 12. Now, is she without 
now in the streets and lying lieth in wait at every corner. This is a stubborn this woman that can't stay in the house, so now she's at the corner, you know, in the streets. You already know what she's looking for. She's looking for that man that she can um what's the word? That she can manipulate to get him to do what she wants him to do. This temp temptress, adulterous woman. Thirteen. So she caught him and kissed him. And with an imprudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me this day. Have I paid my vows? Therefore came I forth to meet thee diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with mirror, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love unto the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He is going, going a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. You already know what this woman is doing. She's enticing this man. She's a temptress. She's an adulteress. She's trying to get this young man or this man to come home with her so they can wear adults, so they can do their thing. That, that's what she's trying to do. This whoever this good the good man is not at home. I, you can you can spin this different ways. I'm gonna spin it the way of maybe she has a husband. So she's telling him the good man is not at home. He's going a long journey. She he's far away. Okay. So 21. With her much fair speech, she causes him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hasted to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. We're going to stop right there right now, because I'm going to give you an example. I can, I can also spin that a couple of ways. Um, this woman, she... Let's 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 we want to take it to the street form. Let's say this woman she had a husband, right? Let's say she got in an argument with her husband, and we see this on TV and the news, etc. She gets in an argument with her husband, so to make him mad, she might go to a club or a bar, right? She meets another um young man. She's flattering this young man. Well, since my husband was going to her head, since my husband made me mad, um, I'm gonna I'ma show him. So she meets this young man, don't they don't know anything about her, they they never met, etc. She flatters him with her tongue. She's like I said, she's a temptress. She um entices him. She one day her husband leaves, let's say he's going to work. He might work from nine to nine in the morning to let's say five, six at, in the evening. So one day she's still getting in contact with this guy. She talks to him and gets him to come to her house. She figures, well, my husband, he's at work. He ain't coming home. I know his hours. This one particular day, her husband gets off early. She has this man in her bedroom. They're doing, you know, and her husband comes in and finds out. Nine times out of ten, who's going to be the one hurt or dead? The other man. And the other man may have not know anything. But because of this wicked, conniving, Jezebel of a woman, this strange woman, this man is now dead. So you can spin it that way, and there's other ways you can also spin it. Um, it says right here, 24. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend 
to the words of my mouth. Park and listen. Listen to what I'm telling you. So you won't fall into this situation or even end up with this strange woman. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. Stay away from this woman. This is not the women, if, if, young, if it's a young man out there and they decided that they wanted to view this video. If you're dealing with a woman like this or you, you know, a woman like this is, is constantly trying to get with you or whatever, get stay away from her. Don't, don't waste your time because she's nothing but trouble. Nothing but trouble. They, she can get you into a whole lot of situations that you don't need to be in. All right, 25 again, let not thine heart decline to her ways, go not astray in her paths. 26, for she has cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her, strong men have been killed by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. And that's the end of Proverbs 7. So I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you will take heed. And, you know, if you don't really understand it, ask the Lord for wisdom. Read it yourself. And I always say, start from the, the beginning of a chapter and go to the end. Read the whole chapter and gain understanding. But this is Blessed Daughter. And I'm signing off. God bless.